Okay, so here's our first look. And one of the first things we had to do was eradicate some wasps because, you know, they're not paying rent, so we gotta get rid of them. I sprayed it. Look at the. Come over here and check this out. See a couple dead ones on there. There's a live one there trying to get away, but he ain't gonna go nowhere. Alright, well, let's take a look. That should be it. I don't remember any other wasp nests in here. You got the tan interior, tan wood, 147,000 miles. And we'll be loading this thing up pretty soon. We just wanted to de-wasp it first. All right, real quick, since we're running out of battery, uh, went and got our trailer tire replaced, all nice and tread now. Uh, we got the Jag loaded. And if you notice, we put some wood down so that when you open the door, it totally misses the rail and actually opens. Makes it much easier than trying to dukes or hazard it. So with that being said, we got a five hour drive ahead of us and we're gonna do some more visiting and then load the dogs up and take off, head back home. Welcome to the next day. And we made it home last night, but not without incident. This time it was not a tire problem. This time, the uh, there's usually a bar that goes from here down to here, somewhere, yep, right there. There's usually a bolt sticking out and there's a rod that goes up. Well, that decided to break off and the ramp fell down, started skidding across the interstate. So we pulled over, uh, ratchet strapped it, and kind of gouged the wheel a little bit. That's the only way we could keep it up. It actually fell twice. Um, the first time, the rod stayed on. So we strapped it up, thinking it was going to stay. Uh, it fell again, and that time the rod popped off. So we strapped it to the wheel, and it, it made it the rest of the way. So let's take a look at this. It's actually an 04. I thought it was an 03. Um, obviously, it's been sitting for a while. You can see all of the uh, nastiness on the paint. So the first thing we're going to do is um, take it over probably about 50 feet and we're going to power wash it and scrub it and see if we can get most of this stuff out of here. These tires are cracked and splitting. I was going to try to take it for a test drive and I might just down the road real quick um, just to see. How this thing does it did run and drive up onto the trailer so I know it runs and drives I just don't know how well when he was let me jump over the trailer here come along for the ride ow my knee when he was pulling it up and stepping on the brakes it looked like this thing was moving a little bit so I don't know if it's a ball joint or what but we haven't even taken a look yet and this rim is totally curbed. Um, there's your fuel filter. In case you're wondering where it is on a 04 Jag Type S. That's interesting. Interesting location for it. And then you'll see... This is why it was totaled. You can see all these heavy, deep scratches that are on here. I mean, all over the place. Back here, it gets really bad. So I'm sure the insurance company took one look at this and said, okay, rear bumper, front bumper, fender, all this paintwork on here. Yeah, it's more than the car's worth. So they totaled it. So it does have a salvage title. Um, I don't really care that it has a salvage title. Well, I just saw all this. If you can get a good look at the paint. This just scratches all down the bottom of it too. So yeah, this thing hit some serious something. Barbed wire fence, maybe? Chain link fence? Don't know, but it was something. All right, I'm going to pop the trunk open and drive this thing off of the trailer and pull it probably just right over here and 
get out the power washer and commence the washing. Okay, we got the car off the trailer. I got the scanner hooked up. Let's take a quick look here. All right, starts right up. We got boot open, applied parking brake, ABS fault, driver's door open. And it did say low coolant, so I've got some antifreeze out there. We got an ABS fault. Um, I don't know what some of these other ones are. But let us. Oh, there's engine coolant low. Just saw it. Door shut. Engine coolant low. So I got some antifreeze out there. Let's take a look here. Uh, we're going to go. It is a Jag V6. It is an automatic. Ooh. Can link circuit. That's not good. Let's see if we can get to the next code. Systems readiness test not complete. Okay, who cares about those? Clear them all. Get them out of here. I don't know if it'll clear that can one, though. Probably not. Oh, it did. Okay. Good deal. Let's check ABS real quick. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Sometimes these things are so slow. Let's go. Look at the shifter. Look how weird it is to go into second. You gotta go like all the way down and around and then back up. Okay, let's check ABS real quick. We got a C1285 booster solenoid output. E1267. Okay, wheel sensor. That cable might have got ripped out when it went through the woods. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. Battery voltage low. Yep, that's... That could be causing a lot of this. Okay. So let's clear these real quick, even though it's not going to work. Because if that speed sensor is out... Let's see if it goes out real quick and comes back. Oh, it didn't even go out. Okay, let's try turning it off. Just turning it on and trying to, trying to clear them codes. Wow, that's weird. Race request sent. Denied. Okay. Perfect. All right, so we're about to take the test drive. Um, both the front windows work. And it looks like both of the back windows are working. Can you see it? There we go. Um, yeah, never had any inclination to own a Jaguar. Whoop. Power mirror works on the driver's side. Works on the passenger side. It keeps saying boot open. The boot is not open. I just shut it. It says apply park brake, but if I'm driving, I'm not going to apply the park brake. Okay, the door locks locked automatically, as they should. I really just want to see if this thing's going to shift. Oh yeah, we got a traction control light. Could be that wheel speed sensor. Yeah, blinkers work.
okay, it shifts. Wow, through all the gears, very nice. Keep an eye on that temp gauge. I think it's getting higher than I want it to. So I believe we're gonna turn around right here instead of going all the way down. So I don't wanna overheat this thing. <laughs> well, I was pulling into the driveway and it just died. And I've got a feeling the uh, battery cable came loose or off or something. So let us, uh, let's go check that real quick. Okay, we got the first half of the power wash done. Uh, that's without even soap. That's just, that's just the water. Pay no attention to the dirt that's on there. That came up from the trunk. But, uh, yeah, I think it looks, looks pretty good so far. And if you look at the back, you definitely see the difference. And now we're about to tackle this side. I think this is the worst side. So, stand by. We get this power washed. And then we'll get the foam cannon and go ahead and shoot it with some foam and scrub her down. Well, we didn't even use soap. We just used a power washer. And there goes the hawk. Can you see it? Yep, there it goes. Right up on there. Now see, this is this is an issue that we have here. Is we've got this hawk right right there. So we can't let our cats out or nothing because of him. Totally not afraid of me. So I don't know what's going on with that, but. I think the reason that the battery was draining was because it always said that the boot was open. And here's your switch right there. So there's two plugs right here, if I don't fall. Uh, three eight millimeter bolts. And we'll take this plastic cover off, see if we can get this switch out. Uh, we'll ohm the switch and see if the switch is good. I'm suspecting it's bad. Um, and then we'll, uh, start the car and see if we still get the boot open okay we've got our switch hooked up to the multimeter and you can see it's connected uh, I've got it set to the resistance scale right now it's open so I'm thinking when you push this down it should go to a short uh, I'm not sure if it's normally open or normally closed but it does now first, I just did it, and it didn't work. And now it is. So maybe that's all it took? I was taking it out and playing with it a little bit? Let's see if I can... I'm not going to turn it sideways. Um, see if I can get it down here. Yep, looks like it's working now. So I cannot get this thing to quit saying boot open. Um, if I shut the trunk and put a brick on top, it'll say, it won't say boot open. So that'll fix it. So I've got the latch. I took the latch off of here and I'm out of adjustment. So I think what I'm going to try to do is, um, take the hardware out and maybe slot right here where these go through so that I can slide this even further and get some more adjustment. So that's the plan right now. And I was looking, and this, this goes for the fog light. This goes for the marker light. So you notice there's no connector. Luckily, on the bumper I pulled, I kept, kept the connectors. So, I'm gonna solder in a new connector on that side, and Probably on this side too, because that looks kind of got vertigree on it. So I'll probably put a new connector on there. And then I believe we're ready to put the bumper on. Uh, probably won't look a whole lot better since the new bumper is blue. The fender silver. And of course the rest of the car is white. But we'll throw it on there, see if we can get it functional. Um, I do have the battery charging. It seems... Like the battery's fine, it 
seems like when you slam the trunk, it's no longer creating a drain. Uh, for some reason, I cannot clear the ABS codes and the other random codes I'm getting. So, um, more research to do about that. But overall, we took it for a drive. It seems pretty solid. The left rear tire is new. All the rest of them are trash. So, probably going to put new tires, at least these other three, to make it a match set. Okay, we got the blue bumper on. I don't know if you can see the headlights are on, fog lights are working, side markers working. We do have some more things to do, like yeah, we gotta put this in. Um, but you know, minor stuff compared to what we got done. Okay, well we're back with the Jag. Um, it's got a really bad misfire. And um, I hooked up my brand new scanner to it, and it said, coil number three is bad. Well, wouldn't you know it, on the passenger side, it goes one, two, and then three is way back in there, of course. So we're going to take the top of the intake off, and that'll give us access to the coils and plugs. And also... You're not going to be able to tell, but um, that spark plug hole is chewed up. So I was in the junkyard, and I got a good valve cover with a good spark plug holes. This came off of an X-Type. Uh, supposed to fit. Looks like everything is in the right place, so it should fit right on. And I've got two coils. I'm going to put coil number four in number three's place. Because I know coil number four is good, I don't know if those are good, and I only want to take this off once. So, that is our plan. I figure if it's bad here, we'll just... Super easy to swap out. So let's take a look. Looks like we've got coolant lines going to the throttle body. That's definitely another coolant line going to the throttle body. Uh, that thing. Electronic throttle, of course. So I think we're going to end up leaving the throttle body here and just taking it off here. I wanted to take the whole thing, but I don't want to lose a bunch of coolant. So in the back, we've got, of course, an electrical connector way back here. I don't know if you can see it. And a vacuum line. So shouldn't be too much in the back to get in the way. Just uh, kind of cramped working space, that's all. Well, let's check in and see how the repairs are going so far. Now, we broke the wires for that connector. And that connector used to go right here. So, uh, we have to see if we can find a, another one of them in the junkyard. And then we got, as expected, that brass insert pulled out that was right there. So what we're gonna try to do is heat it up with a torch and push it in there and maybe it'll remelt the plastic and attach itself. Maybe it won't. Um, so, I can't figure out how to get this out. So that's gonna be interesting. Uh, just a hard vacuum line, goes over here. I mean, it should be fairly easy, but of course trying to get out of here is gonna be the pain. And then, I take this whole valve cover off. Get this out out of the way so we can actually get it and uh, I'll show you the damage to that spark plug hole okay so as you can see we've got damage in that spark plug hole that should be nice and round and it's not that one looks okay and then number three the one that said the coil was bad it's full of water in there uh, you're not gonna be able to see in there but that's probably why it's not sparking the coil might be good I'm not going to use it, but it might be good. And it could just be full of water. Oh, it is definitely full of water. You can see it now. If it'll focus in there. Yeah, it's full of water. All right, so we're going to dry that out. 
that's going to be the cause of our misfire right there. Awesome. I'm glad we found it. Of course, it would have been nice if we could have got to it without having to take the intake off and breaking that wire and everything else that happened along the way. But, you know, we'll deal with what we got to deal with. So we're back and we've got the valve cover in. Uh, it's not torqued down yet. It's just sitting there waiting for the gasket sealer to set up. And then I'll put the coil packs in, get them hooked up, and yeah, I, I still don't know what I'm going to do about this. Hopefully I can get to the junkyard and get another connector. It's a, it's a little weird shaped one. Okay, we've got the valve cover back on, plugs are regapped. The coils from cylinders 4, 5, and 6 are over here on 1, 2, and 3 because I know they worked. Coming over to this side, we've got uh, two of the junkyard coils and one of the coils that was over here. Uh, these spark plugs are regapped to the 50 thousandths. And if you look way in here, that insert, that brass insert back there, is... We just mixed up some JB Weld and put in there. And hopefully that'll hold it so we can bolt the intake in. And also, I just noticed the throttle body's a little dirty on the inside. Ugh, I can't even turn it over. But uh, we'll clean that up real quick. So it's coming along. Um, we're one connector and a few bolts and a few hoses away from being able to fire this thing up again. See how it does. Well, it's the next day. We're back on the Jag. Um, so for that connector that I broke off, I got a new one from the junkyard, got kind of a weird end on it, the, uh, yeah, you can see it. Anyway, that gets plugged into the solenoid here, and I'm just going to cut those back, solder the new ones on there, and drop this intake on, we should be good to go. Okay, we've got our new connector soldered on there. I'm going to slide the heat shrink over, uh, heat shrink that down. And then it's time to put the intake on. Okay, we've got our new uh, lower intake cleaned up. We're going to take this one out. And of course, um, first thing you got to do is take the fuel injector rail out. So gas is going to get all over the place. And then once you get the injector rail out, then there's only like three bolts that hold this in. So. It's easy, um, kind of a pain though, because gas is going to get everywhere, but. Okay, the bottom half's back together. Um, before we do anything, I'm going to turn it on and see if we got any injector leaks, because now would be the time to find that, not after you put the intake back on. Pressurized. No leaks. Okay, we've got her all buttoned up. Let's uh, grab our scanner, hit the key, and uh, see what kind of faults we get. We'll start it and see how well it runs. Probably should have turned the scanner on already, but... Uh, uh, so we're going to be using my new Maxisys BT... 906 BT. Oh, let me find the key. Okay, we seem to be through all that. We're going to do auto scan. And mosquitoes. Oh man, are you kidding me? All right, we got, oh, six ECM faults. Okay. Nothing in the trans. Guess we let it sit there. Parking brake was good. Now before it was showing me a driver's seat code for it being out of range. Um, the passenger mirror was showing a fault. Uh, climate control is our, um, I think it's a motor to switch it to defrost. Yeah, driver's seat still showing a fault. ECM general, hope you can see this. 
God, a mosquito's buzzing in my ears. Drive me nuts. All right, so once this is done, we're going to go back and look at the the uh, ECM codes and see what's there. And then we'll just erase everything. No, we're not going to attach photos. Let's check out these faults here. Drill codes. Yeah, 353 is for the coil. This power lock or power close for the trunk, we don't have that. Door central locking motor. All right, so we're just going to erase codes. And then we'll come back. Okay, so at the end, we've got the ECM, which is flight data recorded, and driver's seat module. It says it's out of range, but, you know, when I hit um, number two, the seat moves. And when I hit number one, the seat moves back. Anyway, let's give this thing a start. Man, we still got a terrible misfire. I thought for sure we would have fixed that. Oh yeah, bad misfire. Okay, so we're back together once again. Um, test the spark, I've got spark, you saw that. I tested the injectors, the injectors are clicking. I did an electrical check on the injectors. The one side's got 12 volts. This is for cylinder three now. And the other side does change when you crank it. Um, I checked cylinder number two, it does the same thing. So I don't know why I'm getting a misfire in number three. I figured I'd do a compression check real quick. And you can see the numbers, not terrible. So this thing should be running. Um, what I'm gonna do now is, since I forgot to check for injector leaks I'm gonna turn the key on check for leaks and then start it I think the scanner is already booted up all that work and we still got a misfire you can definitely hear it so what is going on well while this thing's scanning we'll see if it throws it for number three again if it does I don't know what to do at this point at this point in the video, I noticed that I had some things wrong. I thought that the cylinders were one, two, three, four, five, six, front to back, starting on the passenger side and going to the driver's side, when in actuality they went one, two, three, four, five, six. So my cylinder three misfire that I keep troubleshooting, it was not cylinder number five actually, uh, but it is cylinder number three, which is the middle one. Um, and then you'll see everything I, I'm doing to try to fix that. Okay, we've reached the end of video number one on the 2004 Jaguar S-Type. What I did not film for you guys, though, <clears throat> was I did change all the spark plugs, and that cured the misfire. So, no more misfires. In video number two, we're going to tackle the suspension components and hopefully get this thing one step closer to being able to be inspected. Talk to you guys next time.